Hey, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, this is question number four from October 2017, International A-Level Mechanics M1. Um, this is a question about resultant forces. And um, it's um, quite an important question, part two. It seems very easy, but there's a little trick to it, which um, many people have fallen into in the past. And we're going to um, have a look and explain how not to fall into such a trick. Now it says the two forces F1 and F2 acts on a particle. The force F1 has a magnitude of 8 newtons and acts due east. The resultant of F1 and F2 is a force of magnitude 14 newtons acting in a direction whose bearing is 120 degrees. First of all, we've got to find the magnitude of F2, um, which is that second force acting on the particle, and the direction of F2, giving your answer as a bearing to the nearest degree. Okay, so you have two forces acting on a particle. The force F1 has a magnitude of 8 newtons acting due east. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vector diagram. Um, so let's say that we start from this point over here. And let's say that, of course, due east means in this direction. Okay, due east means 90 degrees from the, like if this is the north line. Okay, due east means... A bearing of 90 degrees that's 90 degrees from the north line okay and that is 14 newtons so let's say that length of this is 14 newtons so this vector represents f1 this is force one and it says force two oh sorry this is for f1 which is eight newtons so excuse me it's eight newtons f1 then it says um, the resultant of F1 and F2 is a force of magnitude 14 newtons acting in a direction whose bearing is 120 degrees. So basically, at the end of F1 is going to be another force, F2. Okay, Where it's acting, we're not sure yet until we've kind of considered the resultant force. So F1 and its resultant force is what's going to end, will cause you to find what F2 is. Because if you want to draw the resultant force, okay, you have to draw the first force and then draw the next force where the first one ends and the resultant will join together the first and the, uh, the join together the beginning and the end of your journey. So you draw force one, then you draw force two, wherever it goes, and then you join the beginning to the end and that's the resultant. Now they told us that the resultant is an angle uh, of magnitude 14 newtons and in a direction whose bearing is 120 degrees. So the resultant is going to be on a bearing of 120 degrees that means it's going to be from the north line, 90 plus 30. So it's going to be like this angle is 30 degrees. Okay, that's 90 degrees. So that's 120. So it's going to be somewhere in this direction. Somewhere in this direction. Where in this direction exactly? We're not sure. Let me make this a bit smaller so it doesn't go out. Don't run out of space. So we know this angle is 30 degrees. And the whole thing is 120. That makes a bearing of 120, the whole thing. Okay, now I know this force is. I know that this force is. Let me just get rid of this line here. I know that this force is acting along this line somewhere. It's 30 degrees bearing. Now we also know something else. We know that it's 14 newtons. Okay, that it's 14 newtons. Okay, so the magnitude of the force is 14 newtons. So the magnitude of this is bigger than the magnitude of the 8 newtons. If you see what I mean. So this is 8 newtons. The magnitude of this is bigger than it. It's like just less than double it. So it's going to be looking something like this. Okay, so we can see that the resultant force is going to be down, down here somewhere. It's not going to be over here because it's longer than 8 newtons. So it's longer than 8 newtons. It's longer than that. In fact, it's quite considerably longer than that. It's almost double it. So the length of the resultant force is going to be something like this. This, has got, this is 14 newtons, the resultant force in this direction. So we know that F2 then, if we join where force 1 ends, uh, we, we start drawing F2 and we join it to where the resultant force is, this is going to be F2. F2 is going to be something like this. Okay, it's going to be something like this. All right, so that's F1 and that's F2. Okay, and we don't know 
how many newtons that is. We have to find out how many newtons that is. Okay, so the question tells us to find the magnitude of F2. So what do we know from this diagram? Well, we know that this angle is 30. We just worked that out. Because if this bearing is 120, okay, this is 90 degrees because it's due east. This must be 30. 120 minus 90 is 30. We also know that this side of this triangle is 8 newtons. And this side, we, we have to find, let me call it x. And this side, we know, is 14 newtons. We can use a cosine rule here. We can use a cosine rule because we know two sides and the angle between the two sides. And we got to find the third side. So for the cosine rule, if you remember, it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine a, where the a is the angle that you know, and the a in the, in the, the small a is the length opposite that angle. So we're going to have x squared equals b squared. So 8 and 14, either of them could be b. So 8 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 8 times 14 times the cosine of the angle 30. So this will give me my this will give me my length x. When I work that out, it's the square root of all of that in my calculator. So let's get the calculator and put that in there. Okay, so we're going to have the square root of 8 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 8 times 14 times cosine of 30 degrees. Make sure we're in degree mode. Yes, we are. And that gives us 8.124. 8.1246 carries on, so 8.1246 carries on, so we can say that F2, therefore its magnitude is equal to, so the magnitude of F2 is equal to, to the, um, it doesn't tell you how to round it, so we'll round it to 3SF, which is the normal standard thing to do, 8.12 newtons, that is the magnitude of the force F2. Okay, now it's asking us, part two says, find the direction F2, giving your answer as a bearing to the nearest degree. So we got to find the direction of this F2 as an angle, as a bearing. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the north line here, because all bearings are measured from the north line, north line and in the clockwise direction. So I need to find what this angle is over here. That is my answer. That is the bearing. This is the thing that I need to write down as my answer, the bearing. Now, I know this is 90 degrees because... We know that this direction is due west, due east, due west from the north line. Um, if I can find this angle here, then I'm done. Let me call this angle theta. I want to find this angle theta. If I find this angle here, I know 90 plus theta. Okay, take away from 360 will give us a bearing. So let's find this angle. Now we've got a choice to find this angle. We could use the cosine rule because we have all three sides. Okay, we know that this is... 8.1246 now that would probably be the safest way of doing this question and I'll explain why later but I will first go by the most obvious uh, method that people would use so this is part one done now we're doing part b part part two okay part two we got to find the bearing the bearing of force two okay so now what we could do here is let's let's use the sine rule first. Okay, so you have um, a pair of opposites. So we know the sine of theta over the side opposite, here, which is 14, equals the sine of 30 over the sine opposite, it, which is what we just found, 8.1246 in its exact form. So now I can say that sine the sine of theta is equal to 14 times the sine of 30 over 8.1246 dot 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 okay let's just move this down a bit so we can find what theta is now using our calculator so theta equals so you stick this in the calculator with the inverse sign okay so let's just work out what we get here we're going to get um, 14 times the sine of 30 over the last answer that we had, which was this answer, and that equals 0 0.816, so we've got to find the inverse sign of that, inverse sign of the answer, and that gives us 59.4936, 59.4936. Now, this is where the mistake happens, okay? This angle, there's no way that it's 59.49. 
59.5. There's no way that is that value because we can see for sure it must be an, an angle which is obtuse. Now this is an acute angle. This would be an angle, I mean the line of this angle would go in this direction. And we know it can't be because we know the length of F2, okay, the length, we know the length of FR, if we, if we go back to here, the length of FR is more than 8. So if, this, if the angle was an acute angle like this, then the length of the, res the resultant force would be less than 8 because you know, this would go back in this direction. So we know for sure it must be more than 8. It must be more than 8. So it must be, so even if it's equal to, even if this length is equal to that length, this, this angle here will still be an angle which is um, an acute angle. So once it must have passed this direction, because we know that it must be, this, this, the, line of, the length of the line FR must be more than 8 must be up to 14 so it's definitely definitely this angle is going to be a an obtuse angle not an acute angle so why did the calculator give us 59.4936 well going back to p2 maths um even p1 maths we know that the sine curve gives us two angles which share, share the same cosine ratio within 0 to 180 okay there's for example, this might be 59.46 or 59.5, say. There's another angle over here, which is an obtuse angle, which shares the same ratio as that. And that angle will always be 180 minus the angle that the calculator finds. So the calculator will only ever give you this angle. It will only ever give you the, the angle which is closest to zero. It's called, the, it's called the, the principal angle, the angle that comes out of the inverse sine function. You will probably learn about that later on in P3 if you do it. So that's what the calculator gives us. We have to decide and use our brains. Can we accept that angle or do we have to think about it being the acute, the, the obtuse angle? Okay, with the sine, you'll always get this ambiguous case. Okay, sometimes you get this case where the calculator gives you an angle which is acute and you have to say, hold on, that's not going to be acute. That has to be obtuse. So I have to say the angle I need, so let's just call this theta 1. This is actually not the angle that I need. The angle I need is 180 minus theta 1. So it's 180 minus the angle that the calculator gave me because the angle I am finding is the obtuse angle. Okay, so whenever you're using the sine rule and you know the angle you're finding is obtuse, you will always have to take the angle away from 180. Okay, so the, th the angle theta is 180 minus the angle we found. So it's 180 minus this answer, which gives us 120.506. So 120.506 degrees. That is the angle theta. Now, that's not the bearing. Okay, we've got to find the bearing. Now, we found that this is 120.506. So we've got to find now the bearing, which we can see very clearly is... The whole thing makes a circle, so 360 minus the sum of these two angles will give you the bearing. So the bearing is 360 minus. So what we're looking for, the answer we're looking for, the bearing of force 2 is equal to 360 minus 90 plus the angle we found, 120.506. So we can work out that. Now we've got the 120.506, add it to 90 equals and subtract that from 360 and you get 149.4936 dot 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 now we want the bearing as it says here to the nearest degree so we have to round this to the nearest degree which is equal to 149 degrees and there is the answer to the question and it makes sense even to look at the the shape of the angle it is an angle which is obtuse if we had used theta as 59, whatever it was, or 50.9, or whatever it was, what was it? 59.4, then our angle would have been like this. Our theta would have been like this. And the bearing would have been, okay, a bearing of a reflex angle, more than 180. And it wouldn't make sense in the context of this question. So this is where you have to be really careful. And it's easy to fall into this trap, especially when you're in a hurry. It's very easy to fall into this trap when you're in a, in a hurry. So 
um, always think carefully when you're using the sign rule um, about whether you're going to use is your angle going to be acute or is it going to be um, obtuse if you know for sure it's obtuse then whatever the calculator the calculator for sure will give you an acute angle you have to do 180 minus the angle now if we had used the cosine rule to find this angle here we would not face the same problem because the cosine rule will only give us ever um, for a triangle it will only give us angles between 0 and 180 there will only be one angle it gives us Okay, because the cosine curve is positive between these two, between 0 and 180, it's, 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 it's positive. Okay, and it's, there's only one angle in that positive region that it will give, um, you know, a value for. If you think about the cosine curve, it goes like this, it goes like that, that. So between 0 and, in fact, 90, there's only one angle that it, it can give. Between 0 and 180, actually, this is... Sorry about that. Between 0 and 180, this is, where, this is 180, this is 360. Between 0 and 90, it can only give us one angle. Okay? So between 0 and 180, there's only one angle. For the sine curve, between 0 and, uh, 0 and 180, there's two possible angles. So sometimes it might be the acute one, sometimes it might be a choose one. But for cosine, okay, what you'll see here is you'll get the angle which will be 120 straight away. It'll give you 120 straight away because... If you use a cosine rule, you'll end up with, um, it will be actually be a negative ratio, which will give you 120. So let's have a look at to see what the cosine rule will give us. For the cosine rule, we'll say, okay, cosine theta, we're finding an angle is equal to um, b squared plus c squared. So it's going to be 8 squared plus 8.1246 squared minus the side opposite, which is 14 squared over 2 times 8 times 8.12. 4, 6, and when we find what theta is, it's going to give us the answer 120.506 straight away. Let's, let's be sure of that now. So you're going to have 8 squared plus 8.1246. I've just used a more accurate version of it. Square, squared, I can do that way, I guess. Um, minus 14 squared over 2 times 8 times um, yeah 2 times 8 times 8.1426 8.1246 we need to use the yeah that's the opposite side to the angle 14 so yeah that's right so that's going to give me the ratio for cosine as you can see it's a negative ratio so it's going to give me an angle down here somewhere so it's going to be an angle in this region which is going to be obtuse so if you put inverse cosine of my answer you'll see it gives you the answer 120.507 okay well, that's exactly the answer that we got before 120.507 okay that if you rounded it would be the same so that, that's basically exactly the same angle that we got there and um, the reason why there's a slight difference is because i've used this rounded value rather than using the exact value from the calculator but it's still 120.50 or 120.5 so that is exactly the same at uh, the right angle and it, we didn't have to think about the dubious case or the the uh, what's it called call the um um the alternative angle okay this is this is the case where for the cosine curve it will give you the exact right answer for this type of case but in the sine rule you're going to get an angle which is going to always be acute and you have to think uh do i want it to be acute or is it going to be obtuse? So you've got to be careful about that. Okay, so I went a bit, bit, um, a bit more at length explaining that because this is a question that does cause some confusion and many people make that mistake. So you have to make your diagram carefully and realize that this F2 will definitely going to, is going, going to go in this direction because the resultant force is bigger than force 1. So it's going to definitely go, make this angle an, into an obtuse angle not an acute angle as a calculator will give us so thank you for watching i hope that was clear and um, um you know if you want to see other questions answered from this paper you can click on the playlist over here if you want to answer see questions answered about vectors in m1 click on the playlist over here subscribe to my channel from this place over here and the card on the top will take you to some other um, m1 type of uh, paper okay so thank you for watching and see you again soon